I am so excited today to share what God has put on my heart with you. Uh, I feel like it's going to uh, really set a lot of you free. So I need you to not be distracted and kind of, you know, just kind of zoom in with me for about 25 minutes or so, because this word is something that God has just really imprinted on my heart. And uh, I know it's for you today. I want to talk today about um, how to recover when you've been dropped. How to recover when you've been dropped. Um, there's, there's a bit of a difference. Um, well, the obvious question, should I say, is, you know, what, what do we mean when we say, you know, when you've been, been dropped? Um, to be dropped is synonymous with having had um, your heart broken. It's synonymous, it's synonymous with having had your trust crushed. Um, to be dropped is the world's way of aborting your greatness through pain. It's where people sometimes intentionally but most of the time unintentionally do things in your life or fail to do things in your life that crushes you to the point that sometimes you actually abort your destiny. To, to have been dropped is to have been put in a position where, as we're going to see in just a minute, where you've, uh, you've trusted and that trust was broken or where you relied on a person and that person was not reliable and it did damage to your capacity to function normally within the structure or the framework of relationships and it even kind of tints the world with a um, you know a hue of negativity because you've been dropped and so often you know we, we're dealing with people who have been dropped and we're judging their behavior without investigating their history. When a person has been dropped uh, in life, when they've been disappointed, when they have been um, let down, it is imperative that the, the persons who are ordained for their lives understand the process of rebuilding the bridges of trust again. There are a lot of you that are watching this right now who have been dropped and this is why it's difficult for you to connect with people this is why it's difficult for you to let you know let people in you've been dropped you don't you you, you don't trust anymore uh, one of the struggles in uh, every corporate team uh, system is the individuals or the individual ability to trust others in within every structure that requires people to work together even in church the main challenge is incorporating the people who have been dropped and have a real disdain for uh, vulnerability the challenge is to get them to fit into the team structure because the only way to effectively and successfully fit into a team structure is that one has to be trustworthy and one has to also trust. And so quite often in, in, in the corporate setting of the church, corporate America, whatever, 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 the challenge is to get people to trust. So what happens is with a lot of, in, in a lot of corporate America settings, one of the exercises that uh, team coaches might bring certain teams through is to take one individual, bring him or her to the front of the room, make them cross their hands across their chest, and have another person or two stand behind them, ask the individual who's standing with his or her arms crossed, hands crossed to, over their chest to close their eyes and to just fall backwards. And to experience what it feels like to actually give away and have people to actually show up. And I've never done it, but I'm quite certain that that is harder to do than it is to talk about. Because there are so many of us who have never had anyone to actually catch us. And so um, the inclination is that they're going to drop me. Because most of us in life 
on a subconscious level have been dropped by so many people. We've been disappointed. Uh, we've been let down by people that it becomes nearly impossible for some of us to ever come to a place where we can really say, I trust this individual and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll close my eyes and I'll fall back because I know that they'll, they'll catch me. I know that they got me. So we can all relate to um, a physical fall and the pain that that would produce. We all can relate to that, but there's a difference between falling and being dropped. To fall means that, you know, somehow I made a mistake and, and I did this to myself, but to be dropped means to uh, be in the care of someone and to have them to fail me. Um, to be dropped, you know, it, beyond the physical, when you think about people being dropped emotionally and sometimes spiritually, uh, that pain is far greater than any physical pain that one might experience in terms of falling. A drop happens when vulnerability and trust have been exercised and yet I've been disappointed. I've trusted you and I've been made vulnerable to you and yet you let me down. Sometimes um, the letdown, as we're going to see, is intentional, but quite often it's unintentional. But either way, the pain is still the same. I was vulnerable and I trusted, and yet I was disappointed. Now, there's a record uh, in the life of King David. If you go to 2 Samuel 4 and 4, the Bible says, um, and Jonathan. Saul's son had a son that was lame of his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Jezreel and his nurse took him up and fled. And it came to pass as she made haste to flee that he fell and became lame. And his name was Mephibosheth. Now this biblical character Mephibosheth is the grandson of King Saul and the son of Jonathan, Saul's son and David's friend, so much so that they were as brothers. Mephibosheth was actually a royal heir. After his grandfather fell out of the favor of God, his grandfather and his father died in battle. And on the same day uh, that they died in battle, uh, Mephibosheth's maid or his caretaker uh, was taking him to flee the danger. And while she was fleeing the danger with Mephibosheth, they stumbled and she dropped him. And Mephibosheth became lame from the drop. Now, the very name Mephibosheth in the Hebrew means from the mouth of shame. And I thought that was very interesting when I read that, that Mephibosheth means from the mouth of shame. It's interesting because in every situation where life has crippled us because of a drop, in every situation where life has crippled us because of no fault of our own, we tend to carry shame. And shame always speaks internally. Mephibosheth, again, means from the mouth of shame. Every situation in life that causes us to be crippled, even when it was not our fault, the voice of shame is speaking from within. And the voice of shame is controlling our future, our happiness, and our destiny based on things that were out of our control. Now, there are four things I want to show you from the life of Mephibosheth and specifically from, um, yeah, specifically from his life centered around his being dropped. Number one, we see that the maid was actually trying to get Mephibosheth to safety. She was not intending to do him any harm. Point number one, 
sometimes people drop you with good intentions. They really didn't mean you any harm. They were just human. Now, now it doesn't matter if they meant harm or not, the pain is still the same, but when you look back over your life, sometimes we have to simply stop and think beyond ourselves and think beyond our feelings or our pain. Because in a lot of cases, the people that dropped you actually gave you everything they had. Now that needs to soak in right there. Sometimes the person that dropped you, sometimes the people that failed you, even though the pain is great, when you really stop and you look back over your life through the lenses of wisdom, you will conclude in many instances that this person, these people, actually gave me everything they had. They did for me their very best. Even though I needed more, they gave me their very best. Look what the Bible says in Psalm 27 and 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. And that term forsake doesn't mean that they're going to do you wrong or do you dirt. It means that they're going to reach their human limitations and they won't be able to go beyond a certain point. He says, then the Lord will take me up. Sometimes we are, we are expecting from people what only God can provide. And sometimes we are crippled by, listen to this very carefully, we are crippled by anger directed at people who did the best they could do at the time with what they had. Now everybody would look at the drop and look at him being lame and they would, you know, if they don't read the context, they would get angry with the person that dropped him. But the reality is she was trying to do her very best for him under the circumstances. And under the circumstances, her humanity showed up and she stumbled and he failed. And the consequence was that he became lame, but he was not dropped intentionally. There are some of you that are watching this right now who are angry with the world because somebody dropped you unintentionally and they actually gave you all they had. You're so angry over the drop that you're not grateful for the effort. God uses, one thing we have to understand is that God uses all circumstances to perfect his plan. And there are some things that you had, I had to experience, period. Doesn't matter who was, who was on call that night. There were some things that were just going to happen. It was never really about him or them. It was always about him. There are some things that God has allowed, there are some directions that God has allowed my life to go in and some things God has allowed me to experience that maybe I blamed it on so-and-so. If they had done this, I would have never experienced that. The reality is that God has pre-ordered the steps of your life and sometimes you're blaming people for things that God ordained. And sometimes the people that you're angry with are the very ones that did the very best they could for you. That's what Joseph realized in Genesis 50 and 20 when he reached his, uh, when his, when he, when he reached his pinnacle and his brothers came and they realized that he was the man, same one that they tried to kill and tried to destroy and sold off into slavery. Uh, now he's the ruler. And then they come to Joseph and they're scared that he's getting ready to kill him. And in Genesis 50 and 20, Joseph says, but as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant this unto good. God chose my path. You reached your limitation because your, your finite, your, your little jealousy and your pettiness brought you to an end of yourself and you thought you were actually hurting me, but God took everything that you meant against me and he used it for good, even your good. So number one, sometimes people dropped you with good intentions. They were just human. Number two, some drops may have crippled you, but they did not kill you. Mephibosheth was crippled, certainly he was crippled, he was made lame, but it didn't kill him. And sometimes you're so busy looking at your feet and how your feet don't work that you don't realize that God saved your life. The same day that Mephibosheth got crippled, 
his grandfather and his dad were killed but God saved his life how many of you are sitting and watching me right now and you're so consumed with what happened to me and you're so consumed with just making yourself a victim that you have failed to celebrate the fact that what should have killed you did not destroy you he was still alive if you're sitting next to somebody, just bump them. Tell them, we're still alive. We're still here. We're still here. We're still here. We have a lot to praise God for because we're still here. It didn't kill me. It may have broken me, but it didn't destroy me. Some drops may have crippled you, but they did not kill you. What does not kill you always makes you stronger. Don't spend so much time focusing on the pain that you ignore the blessing. And in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, the apostle Paul says, and he said unto me, Paul was complaining about this thorn that was in his flesh that God just looked like he wasn't going to remove. And we're going to talk about that real soon. It was like, God, when, you, when are you going to get rid of this? I'm trying to live for you. When are you going to get rid of this thorn? When are you going to get this thing? I'm tired of dealing with this. He was so focused on that thorn. Listen to what God says. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength, God's strength, is made perfect in weakness. And Paul says, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my weaknesses that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Sometimes God allows you and I to break that his strength might be released. And even though you were dropped, you're still here. You went through the abuse, you went through the molestation, you went through the rape, you went through the this, you went through that, you went through this, you went through that, but you're still here. It did, it did not destroy you. Number three, even being dropped and crippled, destiny will still call. You may have been dropped. You may be broken emotionally, you may be broken physically, you may be broken psychologically, but God's plan for you, God's great destiny for you is still calling. And the thing I love about destiny is that destiny has multiple routes. If one is closed down, God will simply redirect you or reroute you but ultimately, if you keep your heart right, and if you stay focused on God, it doesn't matter how many times you've been dropped or how broken you are, there's still a date with destiny. Mephibosheth was crippled. He was without a throne, but God still had a plan. King David, when he came to power, he remembered his covenant with Jonathan, and he called for the descendants of Saul. He said, can y'all find anybody that survived from the house of Saul that I might be kind to them? In 2 Samuel 9, 1 through 3, let me read this for you. It's good reading. It says, and David said, is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And there was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called unto him, David the king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son which is lame on his feet. Everything that you thought or are thinking presently was lost. God has a plan to restore it. You may have been dropped, you may have been broken, but God has a plan to restore the honor to your life. It's not what you've gone through, it's what you're going to. The route may have changed, but the destination is still the same. God's favor, now watch this, listen to this very carefully. God's favor on your life overrides disadvantages and shortcomings to restore all that was lost. People drop you sometimes unintentionally, sometimes on purpose. It doesn't matter. 
God has a way of picking you up. Everybody talks about Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall and all the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put Humpty back together again. And my question was, why did they not call for the king? The king can take all of the broken pieces of your life and put you back together again and represent you into a bright future, but you got to know it. You can't get locked down in the negativity of the drop and fail to understand that the drop does not negate your date with destiny. God is still calling you to greatness. In 2 Samuel, watch this, 9 verses 5 through 10, it says, Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Makar, the son of Amiel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. So he's called for Mephibosheth and Mephibosheth is dead. He's fallen on his face. He's giving reverence to the king. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, behold thy servant. And David said unto him, fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father. Watch this now. And thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, what is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called to Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. So now we see here that even being, having been dropped and crippled, destiny still called for Mephibosheth. And I want you to know, after having been dropped and broken, the, the devil has sown a lie into your mind that you can never rise to your height or to your dreams or to your full potential, I'm here to tell you that God still has a date with destiny on the calendar for you. And then finally, God's purpose will cover every remembrance of your shame. Remember, his name means shame, the voice of shame. Mephibosheth, broken, lame, can't walk. And here's the interesting thing. David calls him in and he restores all of his inheritance to him. But then he says to Mephibosheth, you're going to eat at my table forever. Now the table, understand this now, represents covering. Good God Almighty. Now, when, when everybody was walking in to the, the, the dining room, you could see the difference between Mephibosheth and everybody else. Everybody else is walking with a, a normal stride, but Mephibosheth is struggling because he's lame. But once they all sit at the table and the table covers all of them, they're all made the same. Come on, somebody. God has a grace that is coming upon your life that's going to cover all of your pain, that's going to cover all of your shame to the point that folk will look at you and won't even be able to detect that you've gone through what you've gone through because God has a grace that's getting ready to cover you and everything pertaining to the drop. Good God Almighty. And the Bible says, and I'm about to shout here, the Bible says in Joel 2, 25 through 27, and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. 
and ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I, and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. If you're sitting next to somebody, just, just hunch them right now and tell them God is taking the shame out of this situation for you. God is covering the shame. Hunch somebody else. Tell them God is covering the shame. God is getting ready to bring you to a place of honor in spite of all that you've gone through, in spite of everything the enemy has done to destroy your life, he didn't kill you. And because he didn't kill you, you still have a date with destiny. And when you step into your destiny, God's going to cover you to the point that no one will know that you ever went through what you went through. I want you to know that this is the word of the Lord to you today. God is, God is calling you up out of that place of brokenness and shame. And God is saying to you, you may have been dropped, but let me lift you. Let me lift you again. Every head bowed. Father, I thank you today for your holy presence. I thank you for uh, this rhema that you have breathed into my spirit to pour into the lives of your people, even by way of technology. And now, God, I pray for every person that this message resonates with, every person that has been dropped by someone that they loved and trusted, intentionally or unintentionally, still hurt, and still, still broken, still shame. God, I thank you for removing the shame, healing the wound, and taking away all of the pain. And God, I replace that pain with wisdom, that shame with honor. God, I speak this and I declare this over their lives right now in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I speak healing into the atmosphere by the power of the Holy Spirit. Satan, the Lord has rebuked you and we call your works to be of none effect. Every weapon sent against the minds of God's people, we pull them down in Jesus' name. I love you. I love you. You've been dropped, but I'm here to tell you, God has picked you up today. God bless you. I love you.